Welcome to Special Collections Fall 2020. We are going to do a quick virtual tour today. The place you go to interact with Special Collections materials is in the reading room on the first floor of the library. While social distancing is in effect, we are available by appointment only Monday through Friday and we ask for 48 hours of notice. When you visit the reading room, one of our staff will be available to assist you. We have large tables where you can examine the materials. We also have scanners and can provide other tools for working with archival materials. We also sometimes have displays here. Now for a quick trip to the basement, which is usually off limits. This is our office space. And these are the archives. We have 25,000 linear feet of material. Most of the documents and photographs are kept in acid-free boxes. As you can see, we have materials still waiting to be processed and included in the collection. We are inside of a secure cage right now. There are actually three cages, but this is the largest. We just passed by some rare books, though most of our collection is manuscripts and photographs. We even have some film reels. Let's take a look at how you would find items in our collections. You begin at the library homepage. Unlike almost everything else in the library, you will not find special collections items in the catalog. Let's click on the collections icon. Special collections and digital collections are what we are looking at today. Here is the special collections page. Let's start by browsing the collection. We have categories that highlight our collection strengths, including jazz, forestry, mining, and university history. Our collections are comprised of manuscripts, photographs, and books. When you find a collection you want to use, there will be buttons with more information. Let's begin by taking a look at a collection finding aid in Archives West. Welcome to the University of Idaho Special Collections and Archives tutorial on the basics of reading a finding aid. A finding aid is a tool used by researchers to identify whether an archival collection has materials that would benefit their research. They are organized into two main sections, the administrative information about the collection and a description of the content within the collection. When you first look at a finding aid, the administrative information will be at the top of the page. It contains information about the collection, such as the title of the collection, the date of the materials, the size of the collection, and the collection number. The collection number is used by archivists to identify and reference the collection, so knowing this number is important when making a request for material. This top section will also contain information about the repository, the language of the finding aid, and other pertinent information about accessing and using the collection. Below all of this, there will likely be a biographical or historical note about the collection. This will either have information giving historical context to the materials found in the collection, or a biography of the person who created or accumulated the materials. There will also be a scope and content or content description, which clearly lays out the types of materials found in the collection and anything that might be of particular interest to a researcher. The administrative information may also include information about the arrangement of the materials, so how the archivist organized the collection. They may have maintained the original order or imposed their own order to help researchers better navigate the materials. The information about arrangement may also say whether or not any materials were removed from the collection and for what reasons. In some cases, finding aids will also have a section indicating if the repository has any related materials to the collection that may be of interest to a researcher. In this case, there are two other collections that may be of interest to someone looking at the Vardis Fisher papers. Moving on from the administrative information about the collection, we have a detailed description of the collection. This often begins with a series. A series is simply a subdivision of the collection where materials that are of a similar type or topic are listed together. In this collection, there are two series, correspondence and other materials, and articles. Notice that the series articles has a further subdivision known as a subseries. 
Subseries just further divide the materials. In this case, there are articles written about Vardis Fisher and articles written by Vardis Fisher. After looking at the series and subseries, deciding the types of materials that will benefit your research, you can look at the container list. This collection is described at the box folder level. This means that each of these rows corresponds to a particular box and folder within the collection. For example, this 1 slash 2 next to the correspondence from Vardis Fisher to George Kellogg means that that folder is the second folder in the first box of the collection. You can also see, looking at the container list, the number of items in that folder, in this case 31, and the years those materials span, 1960 to 1968. All this information in the finding aid is meant to help researchers like you find and narrow down materials that may be helpful for their research. Now, let's look at an example of a digital collection. These collections are created in partnership with the Center for Digital Inquiry and Learning, and the contents are immediately available on your screen. The subject areas are similar to the ones already discussed because we are sharing the items in our archives. These are basically online exhibits. If you are looking for photos, the most comprehensive listing is in Hist Photo. While some of these photos are available online, many aren't digitized yet, but we are happy to digitize a few on request or meet you in the reading room if you would like to digitize a lot for research purposes. It can be useful to sort by photo group number or search for keywords. While not technically a special collection, the library holds a wide variety of historical newspapers, and you can see a list here. You can search for a known newspaper name or city. Let's look at some other research resources. If you are researching a famous historical Idahoan, there is a good chance they are in the Biographical Index. If you are researching the university, we have a thorough bibliography you can refer to. Doing some genealogical research? We have a guide for that. Finally, you would be surprised how helpful an old phone book can be. Please do not hesitate to make an appointment or just ask us a question. We are here to help you.